video, we want to talk about transformers and how the physical makeup of each inductor and the transformer itself will see how close we can get it to being what we refer to as an ideal transformer, which is what we talked about in the, which Pete talked about in the lecture. And um, so what we want to do is we want to look at the physical makeups of these two inductors that we have here. This one right here is obviously a bigger inductor, okay? It has more turns, okay? So the number of turns on this one is 1340. We have a smaller inductor here, which its turns ratio is 320, all right? Now, there's a couple other differences here. One, obviously how wide apart the, the wires are, okay, compared to the two. Also, it's hard to see in the video, but this has a thicker wire. It's not exactly twice the size, okay, but it's a little less. But, okay, this is a 30, um, the, the size of this is a 38 uh, millimeter, or 0.38 millimeter, and this is 0.67 millimeter, okay? And what you, what the, what's cool about this is I can actually insert this, tran this inductor into here, so it's going to really explain how the, not only the, uh, the physics of, or how the physical makeup of these two is, but also with the core that we can add into it. This is a solid iron core that we'll be able to add into it and see how that ma uh, makes it work, okay? So let's go ahead and run an ideal circuit and then see how close we can make this to ideal, all right? So um, let's go ahead and fill this out. Here's my formula. I'm using the primary on top. You can use the secondary on top. I know some people do that, but the book we're using actually has the primary on top. So the number of turns in the primary here is 1340, okay? Okay, and this is my primary, and you can tell it's my primary because it's coming from my power source. Okay, in this case, the voltage going to my primary is going to be 6.3 volts. All right, I'm not going to use the 12 by moving it over here, which would be this value. I'm going to use the one that's right here because this, the physics of this, the, the manufacturer doesn't recommend putting more than 7 volts into it. Okay, so we're at 6.3 here, so we're good to go. All right, now the other factor that we know here is what is what are the physics what are the number of turns on this coil right here which is going to be my primary all right and that is 320 all right and this is going just to my meter there's no load on here okay which can sometimes affect the efficiency of this but we're trying to make this as close to ideal as, per, as, as possible so we can understand the physics here okay so there's a lot of ways to do this, but the way that I like to do it is I like to cross multiply then divide when I'm looking for to complete a ratio because these ratios here have to be the same. There's other ways to do this, okay, but I think that's the most straightforward way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take 6.3, I'm going to multiply it by 320. Oops, 6.3 multiplied by 320. All right, that equals 2016 divided by the number of turns in the primary, which is 1340, according to the specifications. All right, and what that says is, my, what this formula is doing, it's predicting that I should get, and we'll round to 1.5 volts, okay? That's what it is predicting we should get, okay? So I'm going to highlight this so we kind of remember that that's what we're looking for. Now let's watch, when I turn this on, how the, how the output changes based upon all of the different factors that we talked about in lab, okay? So we'll turn this on here, okay? And you can ignore this. This doesn't mean anything, all right? Oops, we're getting 6.3 volts here, all right? Now I'm gonna set the voltage to AC, which I have here, and I'm gonna have it on its lowest setting. Now watch this, this is actually pretty cool because you can see that there's no physical connection here, but watch what happens when I bring these close. I'm getting, in this case, four millivolts induced onto here. And I know that's true because when I bring it away, it kind of goes away a little bit, 
all right? Now watch what happens when I begin to insert this in, okay? Look at that voltage is starting to really go up, okay? I'm at about, let's just say 100 millivolts, okay? And I keep bringing this in. And what's happening is more of the flux is cutting in. And then eventually what happens? Oh, I overload my range here. So I need to go up one. All right. And right now I'm at about a quarter of a volt. Not very efficient. Okay. Not very efficient at all. I'm supposed to be getting about a volt and a half. Okay. But why is it when I move this and adjust this, my voltage is going down? Well, the reason is, is because those lines of flux, that creation of a magnetic field on my primary is not cutting as many of the coil, the, the turns on my secondary. When I insert this, okay, that increases, okay? All right, the number of turns increase, but I'm still not being very efficient. And one of the main things that will affect the efficiency of a transformer is if it has an iron core. Now there are advantages and disadvantages to an iron core depending on what you're using the transformer for, okay? But let's go ahead and see what happens to the, the efficiency of this, okay? As I set the, uh, as I bring the core in, I haven't even inserted it very, and you can see that it's already skyrocketing, okay? Well, skyrocketing being a pretty relative term. I'm not even all the way in, and I'm almost at a volt here, okay? So that magnetic field is definitely getting stronger, and that coupling is getting much stronger. Now, I'll go ahead and bring this all the way in, all right? And you can see here that, you know what? I'm not exactly at one and a half volts. Hmm, that's a little bit weird, right? But again, what we're looking at in this circuit here is we're looking at 100% efficiency, all right? We're not near to that. Now, typically when we do efficiency, we use power out times power in, okay? And so when we do that, that is P out over P in, okay? And then we multiply that by 100%, okay? We're not gonna be able to do that here because we're not measuring current and all the different factors, but we can talk about voltage efficiency, okay? And so when we do that, oops, when we do that, let me get rid of this, okay? What we can do is we can clear this out and we can take the voltage out compared to the voltage that we should have gotten, okay? So we're gonna take our voltage right here, which is uh, one and a quarter, divide that by 1.5, all right? Multiply that by 100, and we're at about 83% efficiency, okay? Which, again, Things will change when we put a load on there and we start looking at current and everything like that. But I wanted you to understand and see how all of these things can affect it. Okay? All right? All of these things can affect it as far as uh, essentially what we have here is a variable transformer. Okay? All right? And you can kind of see how taking a core out makes it less efficient. Bringing a core in will make it less efficient and things like that, okay? So now what we're going to do next is we are going to switch up. So, sorry. So this is what we would refer to as a step-down transformer. We're taking 6.3 volts and we're turning it into about a, a volt and a quarter, okay? So we're stepping the voltage down. Now, if I wanted to make this a step-up transformer, all I would have to do is switch where my power is coming into. So right now my power is coming into my 1340, okay? And the power and the output of my secondary is the thing that's going to the load. And the load in this case is my meter, okay? All right, which is not a very good load, but that we're just set, we're just looking at the voltage. So now to make this a step up transformer, all I actually have to do is go ahead and switch these. So the yellow ones are going to my larger trans, my larger inductor. 
Okay, so I'll put those into my meter and I will take my smaller inductor and plug it into my power supply. Again, keeping this at 6.3, okay? Now, let's go ahead and look at and predict what we should get in this, in this scenario here. So now, my primary windings are 320, okay? My secondary windings are 1320. All right, now let me just bring this down here. There we go. Now the voltage coming into my primary has not changed, okay? It hasn't changed. It's still uh, 6.3, all right? Now let's figure out and predict what the voltage on my secondary should be, okay? So I'm gonna take um, 6.3 times Oops, that's supposed to be 1340, okay? And divide that by 320. And it says I'm supposed to be getting 26 volts. Okay, so let me fix this little snafu here. All right, now this is saying I should get 26 volts. I would be super surprised if we got close to that, but let's find out, okay? Let's go ahead and see. So my secondary voltage here is supposed to be 26, we'll just round up to 0.4, okay? So we'll keep the core out. Now this is creating, okay, a magnetic field. And as I get closer to it, not as much of effect as the last time. But let's see what happens when we begin to insert this. That voltage is going up pretty quick. We're already at a half a volt and we don't even have the core in here yet, okay? All right, so now we just crossed over. Now these are cutting as many lines of flux as we can right now, the way that it is put in. Okay, we're at 2.2 2 .2 volts. Now let's insert the core here and see what happens. All right, now we're at 14 volts. Okay, so we're at about a little more than 50% efficiency. Now, I don't know if this will make a difference, but let's go ahead and pull this out. We'll flip this around. No, no, it's about the same. Okay, so that's good to know. All right. So, we're at about 14 volts here. Okay. And I don't know, I don't, I don't see why this would make that much of a difference. No, it's pretty consistent. Okay, so now we are as, we're as coupled as much as we can be at 14. Okay, and that efficiency is not nearly as uh, what we were hoping for. Okay, but if I wanted to calculate out what the voltage efficiency in this particular circuit was, I would take 14, we'll just round down to 14. Um, well, let's give it everything we can. All right, divided by 20, oops, 26.8. 4 equals about 53, okay, percent, all right, because we're going to multiply this by 100, all right, and there we go. We're at about 53% efficiency here. Not great on the step up. More efficient on the step down, okay, not as efficient on the step up, okay, all right, and that's the efficiency that we can use when we're understanding what's happening there, okay, and so um, this is a, uh, this is a, this is just attempting to understand the difference between a circuit when it's being when it's ideal and when it's not and also understanding the physics of how the a transformer works okay not only with a core okay but also um, when we have a, basically a variable transformer that has the ability to adjust okay all right and so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this gives you a little bit of an explanation of the point of the transformer. All right.